Hey everyone, welcome to this video recap of Operation Last Refuge 2, a six hour continuous play airsoft scenario hosted in May 2023 by the Storm Riders in partnership with Frontline Action. Last Refuge 2 had two teams, Red Team and Blue Team, competing to accumulate victory points to be the one with the most victory points at the end of the day. Victory points were earned by controlling the field as well as role-playing inside the proverbial Last Refuge, which was the village field that you can see in this aerial shot of the frontline field. The village was modified and changed to make it a little bit different from the typical play experience that local players would have been familiar with, but ultimately what was different about the village was the fact that it was inhabited by a third independent neutral faction of villagers. And although the village was certainly central to the storyline of this game, there was lots of action, missions, and roleplay to be had all over the field, as well as just regular airsoft play in trying to control different areas of the field to be the team with the most victory points at the end of the day. Now, all this being said, this was a regular airsoft event and lots of planning and coordination and logistics had to go through that, starting with the safety brief. Just like any big airsoft event, it's important to have a safety brief as well as a rules briefing. The game was scheduled to start at 9 o'clock on the dot, but at 9 o'clock we had many players still taking the field, so we delayed start by about 15 minutes. Once the game started, the blue team actually outnumbered the red team right off the start. We had about only six red players on the field at the time the whistles blew, and so that allowed the blue team to take control of the field rather quickly. Blue team seems to be taking advantage. The blue team expanded from their start really quickly and were able to capture the first capture point on the bus field and the one in the big fort field as well, then pushed very hard to the third capture point right on the D-Day field on the tank. This effectively stalled the red team's advance and they were not able to make any ground during the first hour of the day. Meanwhile, near the village, the blue team commander is briefing one of his squads on the procedure to make contact with the villagers in a friendly manner. This would prove an effective strategy, and the blue team was the first team that day to make friendly contact with the villagers and start establishing a positive relationship with them. Shortly after, the red team would also make contact with the villagers in a friendly manner. However, the red team was not gaining any ground on the actual battlefield, and as a consequence, the blue team was still able to put pressure on the red team, even the red players who were negotiating with the villagers. As you can see here, the blue team is able to utilize their considerable tactical advantage to outflank the red players in the village. In an effort to incentivize the red team to keep pushing on the field, I deployed another mission for them, a downed UAV recovery, which was this black case. Once I got back to the headquarters, I then radioed that mission in to the red commander. Chief, this is Sunray. Chief, this is Sunray. How copy? Thank you, Chief. Chief Sunray, uh, mission details follows. This mission is worth one victory point. There is a lost downed UAV. That UAV went down somewhere in the area of the middle capture point. It is a black case with a handle and a red stripe across the front. How copy? This is Chief, I see back. A, dra a downed object, uh, black case, red stripe, center capture point. Chief. Sunray, uh, that's accurate. At, you can return that case to your FOB at any time during the game if you capture it, and it will be worth one victory point. This is Chief Roger, one victory point. Chief out. With that mission deployed, I then decided to fish out our propaganda leaflets and take a walk up the field to find both commanders to hand deliver each of their propaganda packages to them. We thought this was a neat way to give the players and commanders yet another way to make friendly contact with the villagers and show them that they were there to win hearts and minds, not just win the field. For propaganda purposes, oh, if right. you want to make some inroads with the villagers, uh, you might be able to convince them that plus money, perhaps. <laughs> of course, how they'd react to that would be a bit of a different story. I have one problem, one problem. This is a lot of propaganda. I'm a big propaganda guy. 
I'm not big enough propaganda because I, I, I this, I've just met you. Different villagers responded differently to propaganda. Some of them were more helpful than others, as the red team discovered. Meanwhile, on the other side of the village, the blue team was dealing with their own problems with the villagers. Hi, this is Nova Abigail. We have a villager here at the farm who we have secured as a test subject. Over. Capturing the test subject was one of the core objectives that we had given to the commander. However, in this particular case, they had captured the village idiot pretending to be a test subject. Nova, Sunray, have you confirmed the identity of the test subject in question through interrogation? Over. This distraction allowed Red to push the D-Day field and take control of the capture point there. For the next hour, the Red Team and Blue Team would both fight pretty ferociously on the D-Day field right next to the village. As you can see in this aerial shot here, the Blue Team and Red Team are actually very, very close to each other exchanging fire on this field. The Red Team were in control of the capture point mark here, and you can see a few of their players standing around by that jeep next to the capture point. They were feeling pretty confident about their ability to hold this part of the field as they actually pushed to the second capture point, which you can see here. There are a few blue players leaving the capture point to reinforce their fighters on the front line. By 11 o'clock, the red team would have complete control of the D-Day field and would soon start fighting for the middle objective. So, as game control, it was time to disrupt things a little bit more by issuing some more missions. Nova Actual, it looks like we have a strategic opportunity to bolster our presence in the village. Break. We would like you to select four of your best people not currently winning hearts and minds in the village and relocate them to the village to strengthen our numbers and gain even more influence with the locals. Break. To prove to the locals that we care about them, please select team members currently assigned to a nearby capture point. This should show the locals that we are here for them as much as we are here for their resources. How copy? We had told commanders that they did not have to complete every mission that was assigned, and this mission was a bit of a trap. Not only would it divert resources from Blue's front line, but the villagers would not take kindly to the appearance of Blue encroaching on their territory. The red team were able to use this to their advantage to move further into the village and further down the field, successfully completing two of their objectives. Chief, this is Sunray. Chief, this is Sunray. Come in. Chief, Sunray confirms your forces were successful at capturing the control point uh, in the middle as well as the UAV case. So you've been awarded one victory point for the successful mission of the UAV as well as one victory point for controlling the capture point. However, the blue team have since recaptured the middle point. How copy? That sounds correct. Copy good, over. Understood, good work, Chief. Sunray out. As the day neared the halfway point, the score was 6-4 to four in favor of the blue team, with the red team having been able to make up for lost field control by completing more missions. The fighting around the middle objective would continue for the next while, with neither team really gaining any ground. After the noon point check-in, the score was 8-6 to six in favor of blue. We had pizza delivered for lunch to feed our volunteer actors, and it was delivered around this time, so we decided to make a short mission for the blue team to successfully deliver the pizza to the villagers so that they could have a feast. We also decided to use this opportunity to invite both of the team leaders to the village to come for a key leader engagement with the village elder. This was a gameplay opportunity, but we took the time to engage out of character with both of the commanders thoroughly to make sure that all the issues we had had been addressed. Once the KLE was over, Pat filled me in on who he thought had performed better in the role-playing portion of the meet and greet. We then conferred with the rest of the villagers to get a sense of how Blue and Red had both been faring in gaining favor with the villagers. They ultimately decided they wanted to expand their friendship and collaboration with the Red team. Chief, Sunray has a mission for you. Uh, as a result of your good work with the villagers, we have been granted the opportunity to set up an embassy in the village. We would like you to take that opportunity. Set up a base of operations in the building the village leaders have assigned to you. 
you can have your commander plus up to two additional armed embassy guards in that building at any given time. How copy? This is Chief, I copy. Loud and clear. With their added support from the two-story structure in the village, the red team was able to gain control of the middle control point over the next hour. By 1 o'clock, Red's position would be very solid on the middle field as well as in front of the village, and it was time for the blue team to try different action to take control. So we deployed a role-playing opportunity that would see the blue team given the opportunity to neutralize the Red player's embassy. No actual. The enemy has some sort of embassy or base of operations in the village. You need to neutralize that embassy and remove it from play. You do not need to use force of arms to complete this mission. Subterfuge and politics may also provide solutions. You need to retrieve the enemy's flag by tearing it down and returning it to your FOB, and that will provide you an added bonus. Hot copy. We sent a villager to walk the field near the blue player's positions with a case clearly marked TNT on it in the hopes that the blue players would have the presence of mind to offer to buy that TNT from the villager. If the blue team was able to bring that case into the village and into the embassy, then the embassy would be considered destroyed for the remainder of the game. However, this would not be easy to do, and in fact the blue team would not be able to accomplish this particular objective. It's also around this time that both teams started to suffer from fatigue. For most of our players, this was their first time experiencing a six hour continuous play event, and after four hours, energy levels were pretty low. At the 1 p.m. point check-in, the score was 9 to 8 in Blue's favor, but Blue's position had not improved, and unless they retook a control point, Red would tie the score at 2 p.m. The Blue team was pretty well penned in near their one and only control point. Most of the fighting was occurring on the road field, which is a very challenging place for either team to try and advance. Our last planned mission before the endgame phase of the event was to be assigned to the team without an embassy, in this case, the blue team. This would be the last opportunity they would have to reshape the battlefield before the final point check-in of the day. Nova, Nova, Sunray, we have just delivered a black case to your FOB. You are to take this briefcase and bring it to the inside of the school bus on the road field. Once you put the briefcase in place, Advise command, you will then need to protect its location while it calibrates. Copy? In order to complete this mission, the blue team would have to find a way to divert some of the red team defenders from the yellow school bus next to the village. This would not be easy, as the blue team would not only have to gain control of the bus, but also hold onto it for the next five minutes. The wooded area to the east side of the field would provide the most accessible avenue of advance. Another distraction was also planned at this time in the form of a sketchy looking individual running around the field. The red team commander instructed his team to take control of that individual, but this provided a very useful distraction for the blue team to be able to push the field and try to get that case to their objective. Unfortunately, as the blue team was trying to deliver the package to the bus, the player carrying the device was hit, and the red team was able to steal the device from the blue team, basically neutralizing that mission for the blue team, and ensuring the score would be tied at 2 p.m. The final hour of the day would involve the red team protecting the village while the villagers held an official vote to ratify their support for an official alliance with the red team. The blue team, meanwhile, would have to disrupt that vote by any means necessary, up to and including a full attack on the village. The villagers made it very clear to the red team that they were requesting their presence in the village to protect the village during this important time, as the villagers would not be able to defend it themselves. The red team would be invited fully armed into the village to act as defenders for the first time in the day. Meanwhile, outside of the village, the blue team started pushing down the field once again to try and gain ground towards the village, but they immediately ran into the entrenched red team defenders, and the slog continued for most of the rest of the event. And while the blue advance outside of the village continued to stall, the red team was able to secure their position even further by locating and confirming the identity of the villager's scientist. 
With their last efforts having been largely unsuccessful, the blue team ended the game one point behind the red team, 11 to 10. And once the game was over, we added up all the extra bonus points awarded at the end, including victory points for control of the village. And the final score was 15 to 13 in favor of the red team. Ultimately, it was a tremendous effort by both teams, and the game was won or lost in the last hour of the event. You can't ask for better. At the end of the day, we did a debrief with all the players. We thanked all the players and the volunteers and staff for their time. We made sure to take one big group photo with everyone. Congratulations to the red team on a well-earned victory at Operation Last Refuge 2. Hopefully you found this full recap entertaining and enjoyable. Thank you so much for watching. Come join us on Discord if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time.